Kia ora and welcome to this video on question 2 of the 2013 Skull Calc exam. Uh, this question is kind of strange. It uh, introduces you to four different uh, mathematical terms that you wouldn't have seen uh, before, or maybe in Cambridge Maths, um, but I first got exposed to all this stuff at university. When you start talking about angles between functions and uh, orthogonality, uh, so it doesn't actually like say really what they mean or um, or derive them. It just says, hey, here's some random integral functions. Um, try and use them to solve some problems. Uh, it's not a common thing in scholarship to give you stuff um, really beyond NCA level three. If they do, they'll give you hints as to how to uh, cope with it. But here, this is completely new stuff, uh, and we've just got to think on our feet a bit. Part A. Two functions, uh, we've got a linear, they're both linear functions. f of x equals kx plus 1 and g of x equals x plus k. Find the exact values of k for which these two functions are orthogonal over um, over an interval from 0 to 1. So I remember when I first got exposed to this maths at university, I, I, I was thinking of orthogonal as right angles, uh, and I was thinking, how can a, how can a curve uh, meet at right angles over an interval? You know, it's, surely they can only be perpendicular at a point of intersection, but it's um, you know, it's not te technically exactly the same definition, right? Uh, it's, it's something new. So, orth two functions are orthogonal. We're told this if the angle between them is pi over two. So it's kind of related to the fact that ninety degrees, but it's over an interval, which is a little bit different. Um, and now we need to find the angle between these two functions, and that goes back to this definition. Okay, and this definition has got some really random brackets in it. This stuff here, which looks a bit new, it's not quite a vector. It looks like a kind of vector notation, and that's the inner product up here. And then the other stuff with the double lines, the double lines there and there, well, that's the norm. So in fact, for this first question, we've got to use all four definitions to solve the problem. And what starts off with is, oh, okay, here's two linear functions, pretty simple. Requires us to relate all these things together. Okay, so orthogonal. Angle between them, pi over 2. So we need to use the angle function. Okay, using uh, equation 3. Cos theta is equal to this random thing um, over this equally random thing. Okay, and then we go a bit further than that. Um, well, the, theta is pi over 2 for orthogonality, and cos of pi over 2 is 0, so that left hand side becomes 0. The inner product thing is the integral between a and b of f times g, which might go, oh, we need integration by parts if we're integrating a product, but these functions are both linear functions, so we can just expand that product. And then we're dividing by uh, the norm of f and the norm of g. And the norm's just the inner product of f with itself, I'm just going to write it like this, though, because I don't need to evaluate this stuff. Okay, we're making this equal to zero for orthogonality, and so the numerator, assuming that the norms aren't zero and the denominator isn't zero, we just need to set this first integral equal to zero. Okay, so we're integrating between uh, zero and one. The question says our intervals between, uh, x is between zero and one. Our functions kx plus 1 multiplied by um, x plus k. Handwriting just went a bit strange. x plus k uh, dx. And we're setting this equal to 0. We can find the values of k, exact values of k. So expanding this out, kx squared. We've got two linear terms, 1 times x and k squared times x. So 1 
1 plus k squared all times x and then a constant integrating between 0 and 1 k x cubed over 3 1 plus k squared is a constant x squared over 2 kx between 1 and 0 if we sub in the 0 all the x's disappear so we get 0 for everything but subbing in 1 we get k over 3 plus 1 plus k squared all over 2 and then k and that equals 0 uh, times through by 6 would be a good thing to get rid of the fractions and now we have a quadratic equation 3k squared plus 8k plus 3 equals 0 and if we solve that equal to 0 to find the exact values of k um, we get k is equal to minus 4 plus or minus root 7 over 3 Okay, so um, back in 2013, the mark schedule gave us how the marks were allocated, and that was the two mark question. There was a whole heap of definitions there, but we, it turned out we actually only used the inner product equals zero idea because of the angle being pi over 2. Okay, second one, consider the functions, so two new functions now, both linear again, same interval, 0 to 1. Find the exact angle between the two functions. So, okay, this time uh, we need to use the same setup that we, the same setup that we have here, but the left-hand side is no longer zero; it's cos of theta. Okay, cos of theta is equal to the inner product between zero and one of f times g and then the denominator we need to find the norms so the norms are the inner products of the function with themselves so 0 to 1 3x minus 4 squared and then multiplied by the same thing but with the g function 9x minus 5 all squared. Okay, now these, these this is the three definite integrals here. We should show the integration to, to get the answer, but you could also use your graphics calculator to do the definite integrals um, to check that you're doing it right. So for the benefits of this video, I'm just going to use the graphics calculator to find these definite integrals. The maths is very similar to the first one. So if you do it correctly, you get 7 over 2 on the top. And then the denominator. First integral gives you 7. And the second integral gives you 7 as well. Um, so what I did is I went into the run menu of the graphics calculator. I went option. There's an integral symbol. I typed the function in, comma 0, comma 1, close brackets. And that's what I got for that. So 7 over 2 uh, divided by 49 gives you 9 over um, 98. Oh, not 7, 4.5, my bad. 3.5 uh, over 49 gives you 1 over 14. There's something I have done wrong. Let's just go back to the definitions. Ah, okay. Where it says the norm, there's is, is a square root over the inner product of the functions, which I didn't do. I was wondering, I, I knew I was wrong because it asks for the exact angle and cos theta equals one over 14 doesn't have a nice answer. But if I put a square root over that and a square root over that like it should be, then we've got 3.5 divided by um, seven is a half. Um, and of course, we can actually solve that. Cos theta equals to a half 
uh, gives us a solution of pi over 3. It gives, of course, other solutions to the problem, but if we go back to this, the exact angle between two functions, um, I assume that they want us to give the acute angle. Alrighty, that's part B done. Part C. For what positive integers n and m are sine nx and sine mx orthogonal? So we're going back to a similar question of part A. Orthogonality meant that the cosine of pi over 2 equals 0. So we just need to consider the um, numerator of that expression like we did in part A. We're integrating to find the inner product of the two functions and setting it equal to 0. So sine nx and sine mx, integral between 0 and 1. And to find this integral, we're going to use um, a trig identity. We're going to turn the product uh, into a sum. So if you open your formula sheet and have a look at the, um, the options you've got available to you, it's at the top right of the, the trig page. We've got a formula that says uh, 2 sine a sine b is equal to cos a minus b minus cos a plus b. So turning this product into a difference of two cosines. We've got a 2 there which we didn't have, so we're going to have to um, half all of this. We've got cos of nx minus mx, because a is nx and b is mx. nx minus mx are like terms. Um, if n and m are constants, then we've got n minus m times x. Take away n plus m, all x, all over 2. Okay, of course, the 2 at the denominator can come out of the integral as a half. Integrating cosine goes back to sine. It's sine of, oh, so it's cosine of something x, okay, where this something is a number. So think like cosine 2x, antidiffs to sine 2x over 2. So we do need to divide here by n minus m. Um, and then the other one minus sine divided by n plus m. Find this integral here between 1 and 0. Now, what positive integers are these functions orthogonal? My bad, the limit's different, 0 to 2 pi. I was wondering what we're going to do when we're subbing in 1. Subbing in 1 wouldn't have been helpful. Because we've got trig functions. Okay, so the first thing to note is actually that there's a denominator here. That if those things are, um, if n is equal to m or n is equal to negative m, um, then we've got division by zero and these antiderivatives don't work. So it's a special case um, which we need to consider if uh, n, and the question's also asking for positive integers. So n can't be equal to negative m, because then they would be alternating signs. So the only special case we need to consider is if n and m are the same. And that would be integrating 0 to 2 pi sine of nx times itself. Okay, and to integrate that... We do it in a slightly different way. We use the double angle formula because what we're integrating is sine squared of nx. And there's a double angle formula on the still on the trig formula sheet, but down the uh, down the bottom left, um, there's a formula that relates powers of sine. We've used it in quite quite a lot of other videos to date. It's two sine squared a is equal to 1 minus cos 2a, where the a is equal to nx. And again, we need to get rid of the 2. So 
sine squared a would be this. And if we're integrating that between 0 and pi, we're, we switch it to integrating 1 minus cos 2nx all over 2. And the half can pull out the front of that one. 1 antidiffs to x minus cos antidiffs to minus sine. Okay, and that there doesn't have the same problem as, uh, as the first antiderivative of division by 0 if n is equal to m. Okay, now we sub in the limits. Well, um, if we sub in if we sub in 2 pi and n and m are integers, we're subbing in 2 pi uh, into there and into there, we've got sine of a multiple of 2 pi, which is 0. And if we sub in the bottom limit 0, we've got sine of 0. So all of that disappears uh, and it equals 0. So what that tells us is if n doesn't equal m, then this integral um, equals zero, so orthogonal always. Okay, remember that to be orthogonal we would have needed to solve this integral equal to zero. Well, it's always equal to zero. Um, on the right hand side though, for the special case, if n is equal to m, uh, then if we sub in 2 pi we don't get the same thing because we're subbing in 2 pi into here, into the x value, so we get a half 2 pi minus 0, and then the other one is 0, so we get pi, uh, which means that if n and m are the same, then the functions are not orthogonal. It kind of should make sense it's a special case because if n and m are the same, you've got two functions that are the same. And how can a function be orthogonal with itself? Okay, that was a little sneaky um, a sneaky part to this question. And looking at the mark schedule, uh, that was the third mark. So if you missed that little special case and just said they were orthogonal for all integers n and m, you would have got um, 7 out of 8 if you got everything right in that question. Not too bad, not too bad a problem. The integrals themselves were fairly fairly tidy and, and reasonable, but when you're throwing unfamiliar functions and used to the, the brackets and the notation can actually be quite overwhelming. So just take your time through that. Uh, anything unfamiliar, take your time to understand and of course get your limits right, unlike what I did and going from zero to two pi on the third one. Um, Another bit of advice, you know, we've, we've got this horrendous thing here, but we actually only solved the numerator equal to zero. We didn't worry about the stuff in the bottom. Um, so taking it slow is, is a good strategy for a problem like that.